But here's the news of the day. You hate to see this. Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert out for the season now, undergoing season-ending surgery today on his fractured right index finger, the injury he suffered on Sunday. Our NFL insider Dan Graziano is here with us. Graz, what else do we need to know about the situation with Herbert? Yeah, they placed him on injured reserve, which is a minimum of four games missed, and there's only four games left in the season, so Justin Herbert out for the season, as you said, Laura. Uh, head coach Brandon Staley said after the game Sunday they would do what's in the best interest of Herbert long term, uh, and this repair on the broken finger is what they decided fit that description. So at 5-8, and eight, uh, it looks like the Chargers are going to miss the playoffs, almost certainly 5-8 and eight without their starting quarterback, and that leads to some questions, obviously, about the future there. Uh, in LA, Herbert is signed long term. He signed this off season, but that is a spot where we are watching for a potential change uh, at head coach. Three seasons, disappointing seasons under Brandon Staley, uh, and and you know potential changes in the front office. So a lot of questions around what the team will look like around Justin Herbert going forward. He is expected to be back in time for next year, um, but yes, a, a lot of uncertainty in that situation other than him. All right, Graz, you're with us all show long, so more from you to come. Despite the Chargers' 5-8 and eight record, Herbert ranks fifth in the NFL in total QBR. With his season now over, it means that he's had a QBR over at least 60 in all four of his NFL seasons. The only other quarterbacks who are on pace to do that are Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Dak Prescott. It, it does tell you just the company that Herbert's in when it comes to talent and the type of quarterback that he is. Dan, considering all that, what does this mean for the Chargers organization? Well, it's a results-based business. This feels like the beginning of the end. You heard Graz talk about they're 5-8 and eight right now, four games left. It was a long shot to get in with them. And with the situation now with Justin, like the timing of this becomes very fascinating if they move on from Brandon Staley. This is not like when Miami fired their coach when Tua was younger, Jared Goff with Sean McVay. They don't have to hire an offensive-minded coach strictly to rebuild their young quarterback. <laughs> Justin's bald for four years, yet they haven't won. So this isn't because, hey, we've got this young quarterback and we got to hire the right guy for him. So I just think the timing of the likely move for the Chargers and who they hire is as fascinating as does it have to be the offensive or defensive minded guy? Yeah. And in some ways, it's, it seems like such a desirable job, obviously, one of the better young quarterbacks in football. But in other ways, when I look at this roster, I see a lot of flaws. And you start to feel like it wasn't just coaching or whatnot that has led to the lack of success in recent years. The draft classes outside of Thule this season, a couple of the offensive linemen yeah. have not been fantastic. Uh, it's a very top-heavy roster. Dan, this year, Herbert's three leading receivers were Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler and Gerald Everett. That's the oldest trio of leading receivers in the NFL. Obviously, they lost Mike Williams, but he's no spring chicken himself. Then, because of the J.C. Jackson trade, you are $44 million over the cap next year. He's gone, but the dead money remains. So, to Dan's point, um, you know, coaching is obviously getting a lot of scrutiny, but I think the front office also deserves a lot of scrutiny and also complicates this job for the next, potentially the next uh, regime. Yeah, MK, I, I think that Justin Herbert one, is one of those quarterbacks that doesn't have to be scheme dependent. He could play in a lot. Yeah. If they move on from Brandon Staley, you're going to hear Ben Johnson, potentially Kellen Moore, Gerard Johnson, who's the quarterback coach for the Houston Texans, CJ Stroud playing so well, Bobby Slowick, their offensive coordinator. I don't know if there's a, sp I don't believe there's a specific offense that he needs to play in but it has to be one that is built on play-action chunk pass game. Uh, not a shocker there. You mentioned all offensive guys uh, to take over there, which would be Yeah, I don't know. I, it doesn't have to be offensive yeah. for me. Okay, love it.